There's no more air in the room. There's no more air. James, breathe out. It's like not wearing a face mask. He's just going to get it. Jeremy is a largely out of control lunatic. I don't know if we've actually ourselves. I think Jeremy did, or was it Hammond? Hello, I'm Richard Hammond and we're doing... Who's most likely to? Round two. For the Grand Tour. So we'll start you off on what could potentially be quite an easy one. Who is most likely to cook the best meal? Well, me. Me, but where the best means the least worst. I don't think, I'm not aware that Jeremy can cook anything at all. He claimed to be able to make Vietnamese noodle soup, but I've never actually seen him do it. And Richard Hammond, he claims to be able to make something with Italian ingredients in his flat, but I've never seen him do that either. So it's me. Me. Me, because we've already had, and they've said on television, James May cannot cook. He said, I cannot cook anything. And Richard Hammond can cook something, which is beans, which he did in the uh, Uganda special. Um, and I'm the only one who can actually make a roux and make not very much. And I wouldn't call myself even a good cook. I'm not even a proper cook. I can't really cook, but I'm better than those two. I can make pasta things with pork and peppers and mushrooms and onions, and I can make a sauce, and then James May can do cheesy peas, and that's it. Well, I, 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 if it were me, it would be incredibly plain. If it were James, it would be... It possibly could be James. Jeremy would just go insane and use a flamethrower, and it would be catastrophic. Um, James has been doing a bit of cooking lately, so it would be me. James what? said himself, and Jeremy said himself, so you've now said yourself. <laughs> that that sounds good. Glad to hear. <laughs> Who's most likely to be the best roommate? That's got to be Hammond, because May's sinuses are something... Well, well you, you would have heard them. Do you live in London? Yes. No, you heard them then. <laughs> um, it, it's, I mean, people are moving out of Wiltshire now, since he's bought a house down there. Property prices have fallen by 60% because of the incredible noise his sinuses make at night. He can breathe in for four and a half hours. <laughs> like, There's no more air in the room! There's no more air! James, breathe out! <laughs> um, yeah, there's never been a, a better example of someone who should give up smoking as soon as possible. Well, I have tried. I mean, I've been roommates with Clarkson more than Hammond. I spent most of the, our trip to North Pole all those years ago in a tent with Jeremy Clarkson, which is just a disgusting experience. Um, I think, well, to an outsider, I'm probably the best roommate. Or am I? I don't know. We all snore um, at times. Uh, Richard Hammond likes to move it. I think, hmm, me. So it's going to be between Jeremy and me. Um, I'm going to think Jeremy probably said me. So I'm going to say Jeremy. Ah. Who is most likely to get food poisoning and have an accident whilst travelling? When you say an accident, you mean shit themselves. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, to be really honest, that's happened to all of us at some point. We've done a lot of travelling and we've all had... I don't know if we've actually shat ourselves. Actually, I think, I think Jeremy did, or was it Hammond? When we were in the Middle East, one of them did. So it's not me, um, I've not shat myself. I think it's probably Hammond, again, that's two points ahead. Hammond is the most likely to cack his dat as a result of not eating carefully. Oh, bless him. <laughs> Jeremy does seem to be, be quiet, quite, quite constitutionally sound as far as his guts go. I'm very careful because I read a lot of rules and had one or two bad experiences. So I follow the boil it, pee it, leave it rule for our sort of camping and so on. I think Hammond doesn't. So really the odds are stacked against him. It. It's like not wearing a face mask. He's just going to get it, you know? And to be fair, in Madagascar, you had it thrown on you. What, the shit? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but I just didn't breathe it in, you see? I <laughs> the rules. I mean, Andy Wilden, our producer, is, uh, he once in Iraq on that trip in the Middle East, three wise men, 
um, realized that he needed to get to the lavatory in a big hurry. And the nearest lavatory he could think of was in his room. And he got in the corridor of the hotel to the door of the room. And I guess we've all been there, whether it's coming out of this end or the other end. Key went in and the buttocks were not strong enough to hold the uh, gallons of brown liquid in. So he simply thought, well, there's no point going into my room and doing it in there since it's already coming out. And just stood in the hotel corridor and sh himself. Um, gallons and gallons running down his legs into his shoes. And then what he, once he'd finished, took everything off, then went into his room so that his room didn't get soiled. Um, so Wilman's a trophy. Everywhere we go, he has foot tummy issues. And of the three of us, of course, it would be, uh, it would be Amazingly, it's Richard Hammond, even though he doesn't eat anything local. I don't understand how he manages to get as ill as he does, because he just eats biscuits or army rations or... And yet somehow he's always ill. I mean, I'll try anything. I think I'm made of iron inside. And um, James is quite good at trying things. And he, he and I don't seem to get bothered by it. Not sure why. Annoyingly, it's not Jeremy because He's barely human and has a sort of cast iron stomach arrangement on him. You know, cows have, is it cows have lots of stomachs? Jeremy has like more, they're all enormous. Um, I, I don't, it's not him, uh, unfortunately. James has had so many hot curries. He and I once had a chili eating competition. We were in a Chinese restaurant many years ago in London, just having supper. And there was a little tiny bowl of chilies in between us. And I said, oh God, then we'll have one each. Ah, the dried chilies. And I ate one. And he ate one. And we had to look at each other. And I, I felt it burning through here. <laughs> and then he, nothing. So I assumed, well, wait a minute, I got a dud. So let's do it again. And again, <laughs> it's burning out my face. And no reaction from James. And I did it four times until I realised he doesn't notice them anymore. So sadly, it's not James because I think he's burnt all of that out of his system. Um... I'm from Birmingham. We don't like complicated food. So it's gonna be me, isn't it? Who's most likely to have a meltdown on camera? Jeremy Clarkson. I mean, he might literally melt down on camera because I mean, we've recently been filming in a, well, say recently, it's getting on for a year ago in a very hot place, Madagascar, and he's just, he's not good at coping with it. And he was in an enclosed car with air conditioning and he spent most of his time moaning about how hot he was. I was being covered in human shit and things like that, and I didn't complain. Jeremy Clarkson complained because his shirt got a bit sweaty, so, um, Jeremy. It's either me or Hammond. James, it takes a long time to get James to lose his temper. It's hilarious when he does. But in, fun, in terms of short, sharp bursts of rage, me when I'm overtaken by the camera tracking car when I'm trying to do a piece to camera, or by the director on the walkie-talkie, and Hammond when he's interrupted by anything coming the other way. So it's a, I'm going to go dead heat between Hammond and me there, but certainly not James, who has the emotional intelligence of a stone. Most likely to have a meltdown on camera. Um, let's have a... Th on camera, specifically as in on camera. Yeah. Um, I... Whoa, you see, we're all... Three, OK, let's put James to one side. He wouldn't have a meltdown on camera. So it's going to be between Jeremy and me. Um, I'm going to think Jeremy probably said, mm -hmm. so I'm going to say Jeremy. Ah. Um, yeah, I know it's, I, it's going to be me, isn't it? Because I probably would. I'd, I'd just, because I'm honest and I'm an honest soul and I give of myself in the making of the show. So I would show that to the viewer so that we can better empathise with the experience that we're trying to portray. Plus, um, an out of control little brummy idiot, so it probably would be me. Who is most likely to insult the locals by accident? Me. They don't need me to elaborate on that, it's just going to be me. I was the one that gave the finger to an American policeman, but that was by accident. Although Richard does call a, a guy a pirate in this episode when he's actually just dressed in his uh, that's wedding true. Day. That's true. He did, uh, he did mistake some uh, very important national costume for a man dressed up as a pirate. And that's unusual for Hammond. Um, whereas I seem to just do it all the time. And it's not on purpose, usually. 
Well, wait a minute, as in not on purpose. Because yeah. obviously there's only one clear contender for most likely to insult anybody on purpose. And it, it's tall and called Jeremy. Um, it's not going to be James there, is it? Um, by accident. Uh, oh no, that's possibly me actually. Because I would try, whenever I try and do anything a bit controversial, we get the heck kicked out of us. And I haven't meant to. I, and I, I'm, I'm actually one of the three of us that doesn't like being in trouble. The other two love it. They love being in trouble. So they would upset the locals on purpose because it's fun. So most likely to upset them by accident is me. Because I also wouldn't have thought through the ramifications of what I'm saying and what it might actually mean. Because I probably wasn't concentrating, but was thinking about something. It's me. Yeah, I'll take that one. Yeah, such as, you know, calling a person on their wedding day a pirate. You know? I'm, I, I have no recollection of that to which you refer. <laughs> People will just have to watch. Oh, yeah, it's me. Ooh, so that's probably fairly even Stevens, but if it was deliberately, I would say Jeremy. If it was accidentally, it might be me. I'm just, I'm thinking not so much of Madagascar, I'm thinking of my trip to Japan that I made, where I was really doing my very best to be um, a, an excellent ambassador for Britishness and decorum and all the rest of it, but it's so easy to do something that the locals think, what a total crass idiot. Um, so I have some experience of accidentally offending the locals, so I'm going to nominate myself for that one very magnanimously. What did you exactly do to offend them? The Japanese? Yeah. I, I went to Japan. It's <laughs> <laughs> your mere presence. <laughs> mere presence is slightly offensive to a, to a very cultured society like that one. They just think this man is too large and too fat and too hasty and just too inept. Who's most likely to have the worst midlife crisis? Most likely to have the worst midlife crisis. Ooh, that's interesting because we're all kind of around that age. Jeremy's old. He's, I, mean, I doubt he can remember his midlife crisis. He probably had one, but it would have been in black and white. Um, and Je Jeremy is a walking midlife crisis, I suppose. So that's what he's made of. James, midlife crisis, he would, but it might be having a different pie or changing a, a brown jacket for a, a tan jacket. That's probably far enough. No, oh, no, it's not going to be me again, is it? Because I think, I hate to say, I am in the grip of a midlife crisis. Richard Hammond. Richard Hammond, because, I mean, he's just he's just become 50. He's the baby of the show. I'm 57 and Jeremy Clarkson is 90-something, oh, as far as I can make out. And if we've, if we've had them at all, they've already been and gone. But I think Hammond is in the thick of his. He's done a lot of dressing up. He's buying a lot of vintage cars. He's buying land. He's he's uh, he's just doing everything. He's wearing tweedy waistcoats. He's speaking like the bard. He's grown a beard. He's grown a moustache. He's yeah. He's bought a scooter. He, everything. It's Richard Hammond. It's real. It's not a question of who's most likely. It's who is, and it's him. Wait a minute, James has a, a BMW 1000RR, which is a very fast motorcycle. It's a brutally quick motorcycle. He doesn't really ride it to its full extent. Um, I'll be honest, you could follow him quite easily on a bicycle. So, it's, but why does he have that? Mm, this is a question, there's evidence stacking up now that James is suddenly coming out as a front runner and he drives a, a Ferrari. I don't have a Ferrari, it's James. It's James May and he's having it right now because he drives a brilliantly coloured orange Ferrari and a, a fast motorcycle. It's James May. It's, it's answered itself. You know the expression dapper little man? It's funny nobody ever says dapper big man, do they? Look at that dapper big man over there. But Hammond is the classic dapper little man. He starts wearing tweed waistcoats and a little tailored jacket and his snazzy trousers. He doesn't wear the jean trouser anymore, whereas James and I still do. James has bought a red, oh no, James did buy a red anorak with a fur lining about 10 years ago and still wears it every single day. And nobody's had the heart to say to him, that's hideous. <laughs> but I don't think that's a midlife crisis thing. As I said with James, that will have been, oh, I don't know, not putting a record back in its sleeve quite as quickly or as elegantly as he should or not 
taking his library books back. Who are you most likely to save from a sinking ship? Oh, Christ, women, children, pets, the food, the beer, uh, the charts, the lifeboats, bottles of water, things from the souvenir shop. Yeah. If you had to choose between Jeremy and Richard, who are you going to choose? So the ship is going down, I can choose to save either Jeremy Clarkson or Richard Hammond. So I've got to think about the chances of survival. So we may end up on, say, a desert island or floating around on a piece of driftwood for weeks on end. I'd, I'd save Richard Hammond, because if I saved Jeremy Clarkson and we did end up adrift for two weeks, he would test me on film trivia, which he hasn't realised bores the arse off me, but he still does it. And I don't want that for two weeks drifting around with an old plank, so I'll take Richard Hammond, who would also be easier to cook. <laughs> as, a, as a qualifier to that, I'd, I'd like the option to be left alone on the desert top. <laughs> so you won't save anyone, really. <laughs> so, oh, no, I'm really sorry. I didn't quite get to you in time. The ship. Just everyone on the ship. Just then the captain, the... Purser, uh, I don't know what sort of, a, if it's a ship, it'll have lots of cr uh, crew on it. I'll save one of those. If you've had to choose between James and Richard? No, it just neither. Can we assume I've saved everybody else on the ship? Yeah, everyone else survived. It's just between James and Jeremy. And I've got to decide which one to save. Mm -hmm. Right, this is a complicated question because you've got, firstly, the practicalities of saving. Um, they're both, you know, bigger than me. Jeremy's enormously so, and would be, I mean, there's every chance that in attempting to save him, I could end up dying as well. Because you're never gonna, you're not gonna pull him out of a porthole, are you? I mean, it's, it's, it's a horribly big unit. So that's, practically that's gonna be difficult and risky. Um, but then you've also got to think, See, James practically is going to be difficult because I'd be shouting, come on, James, hurry, 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 we've got to run. And, and it's not going to happen, is it? Um, but then equally, you've got to consider the rest of humankind. What are you inflicting on them by the saving of one or the other? Um, does humankind really want Jeremy saving? But then again, does humankind really need James saving? God, I'd have to think about it. I'd probably spend so long thinking about it, it'd be too late and I wouldn't be able to save either. So I think that's impossible to answer. I love how conflicted you were because they both said nobody. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, at least I gave it some thought. Who is most likely to get into trouble with the law whilst traveling? Into trouble with the law? Not Richard Hammond because he hates being in trouble. Um, so me or Jeremy, uh, have we ever been in trouble with the law? Not seriously. We've been stopped by the police once or twice because we wanted to check out what we were doing. I, Probably Jeremy, because he's not diplomatic, let's face it. Oh, well, that's Clarkson, isn't it? He's sure to be. Yeah, it is. It is. Because, I mean, I, I, yeah, I don't like being in trouble. I hate it. James um, likes being in trouble, but he's not very good at getting in trouble. <laughs> he, he, wouldn't, he wouldn't be driving past enough or doing anything silly enough. Um, Jeremy is a largely out of control lunatic and therefore more likely to accidentally i mean you know they're not lawbreakers none of us are but yeah it's him uh, well not james i mean doesn't do anything never breaks the speed limit um that, no not james um it would be hammond or me i suppose really on the basis that it would almost certainly be a motoring related um issue and if it's motoring related, that means exuberant driving, and that's going to be Hammond or me and not James, who doesn't drive in an exuberant fashion, as you may have noticed. <laughs> well, last time we um, did the Who's Most Likely, you said that you had been to a foreign prison. So I wanted to ask you to elaborate on that a little bit. Two. Twice. Two foreign prisons. How did you manage to get there? I escaped from one of them. It was quite, I was quite cunning, but uh, no, only it's just overnight stuff, you know. When I was a teenager, and um, no, there wasn't really a prison. Well, it's a cell rather than a prison, although it felt quite prisony when you're in there. Who's most likely to survive a week with bare grills? Uh, 
me because I'm quite good at finding my way around five-star luxury hotels. I mean, I've heard opposite opinions on that from Jeremy. Uh, what did he say? He says you get lost quite a lot. What, in a hotel? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've been lost in a hotel before. A very complicated Victorian one with lots of alleyways that I've done. And I don't listen when the people at reception tell me where my room is. I think I'm listening and I go, yeah, yeah, but I'm thinking about something else. And then I set off and I think, I wasn't listening. <laughs> I anyway. Oh dear. Well, on the show, obviously, uh, Richard is the one who's harnessing his Bear grill's survival instincts. So I'm surprised you didn't go for Richard. Yes, but at the same time, he's quite worried about his appearance and he's quite fussy about what he eats. And I don't think those are good qualities for someone who has to survive. And Clarkson was just making cocktails on the beach. He probably would just be making cocktails or having a tantrum because he was too hot, yeah. Hammond. Hammond loves all that stuff. He always maintains old oh, Bear Grylls fakes it. Bear Grylls had a man in a bear costume. True. But, um, you know, Bear Grylls does like a five-star hotel. But the fact is, Hammond could talk to him about, you know, well, how do you make an honest hole and how do I make a catapult out of a twig? Can I eat this deer before it's dead? And all of those things. And what does your urine taste like? Mmm, mine's nicer. Um, so they'd have a hearty old time, whereas James and I have no time at all for any of that nonsense. Do you mean Bear Grylls would have done us in? Is it, as, as, would we have, because that is a factor. Because obviously if you're with Bear Grylls, you're in a survival situation, because that's what it's about. But equally, if it was just Bear Grylls and one of us, he's going to want to... Hmm. See, ooh. he'd want to, because he's going to want to strangle us. <laughs> that's what I mean. Surviving a week with Bear Grylls, which one of us wouldn't Bear Grylls have killed by the end of the week? That's a difficult... I can be pretty irritating. I mean, I'm quite... I don't need as much to survive on as the others, because I'm a quarter of their size. So in terms of finding food, sheltering from the elements, I'm a much better proposal is I, 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 I'm, I'm going to do well um but I'm quite annoying and I think Bear Grylls would probably at some point have swatted me um Jeremy caught pneumonia from rosé wine on a boat in the Mediterranean so you know I mean, he's a big roughy tufty guy but it would suggest a certain fragility there James May well, there's a sloth, sloth like quality, isn't there? He doesn't move a lot. He doesn't run about. He wouldn't run about panicking about being in a survival situation, would he? So that would conserve energy. He's kind of largely inoffensive. So he's less likely to have been killed by Bear Grylls. He wouldn't have needed much to keep him going energy wise because he wouldn't have done anything. So I, I'm going to say it's Jane May. <laughs> Remarkably. And I, that's just what happens when you apply sheer and pure logic to a question. You arrive at an answer you weren't expecting to be delivered, and that's, it's James May, incredibly. I'm very, I'm very surprised by that, because you, you harnessed the power of Bear Grylls. I know, I, 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 you, you would think, immediately, I'm, I'm the more physical and physically robust, perhaps, but as it turns out, it's James May. Yeah. And who knew you could get pneumonia from Rosé? That's quite I, impressive. No, nobody else has ever managed it, but James <laughs> did uh, and therefore it couldn't be and finally who's most likely to be andy wilman's teacher's pet uh jeremy clarkson i mean they've, they've basically been in love with each other since they were about eight years old there's no point pretending otherwise i'm surprised by that i thought it'd be richard why i don't know i always see him as like i was a stroppy little shit <laughs> Does, does Jeremy get special treatment? I, I don't ask. <laughs> Me, because he used to be my fat at school. <laughs> James did concur. Yeah, that's exactly right. Not James, because poor old Andy has to edit James's um, piece to cameras, which can, um, can be quite long. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got to take piece to cameras that are this long and then sort of make them that long so they fit into the actual programme. did one with James where I said, James, we just need 10 seconds on this Maserati. 10 seconds, that was all we had time for. 
And I had to stop him when he went past two minutes. I said, this whole item, James, is only 20 minutes long. A tenth is on your views on this boring old Maserati. You've got a tenth, it was only 10 seconds. No, James, it was 20 minutes. So yes, poor old Andy does have to edit James down. Hey, what's going on? I'm Kevin Hart. Hi, my name's Eric Stone Street. Hi, I'm Margo. I'm Journey. I'm James McAvoy. I'm Daniel Radcliffe. I'm Rebel Wilson. I'm Jeremy Clarkson. I'm going to be translating some Scottish tweets for It's Gone Viral. On It's Gone Viral. Ooh. On It's Gone Viral.